ओके शालोम एंड प्रेस द लॉर्ड जय मसीह सबको वेलकम टू क्लास एवरीवन वील बिगिन विद अ वर्ड ऑफ प्रे कैन समबडी ऑलरेडी वी स्टार्टेड लेट टेन मिनट्स लेट कैन वी कैन समबडी प्लीज लीड अस इन प्रेयर प्लीज एनीवन क्विकली can you please lead us in prayer anyone who has a mic or even online students can you please lead us in prayer okay let's pray father in heaven we thank you for this day god we thank you for the gift of life we thank you that you have a plan and purpose for our lives your plans and your purpose for our lives are good and uh, gives us a good future and hope and we just want to thank you for that god we just uh, commit this um, time into your hands we pray that you would speak to us guide us and lead us and god spirit of god we pray that you would Uh, prompt us in our inner being that you would speak to us and so that you we can identify and know and walk in your plan and purposes and do what you want us to do father we thank you for hearing our prayer in jesus name we pray amen so last week we were looking at the nine nine guide posts yes so which guide post we were looking at last week oh uh, the seventh one recognize um you know go- godly counsel okay so we said that you know god instructs us leads us counsels us through there are three kinds of counsels you know uh, counsels based on people's knowledge skills expertise so it can be godly people who you know speak into our lives who can reveal uh, things in our lives who can guide us and lead us and god uses people with their skills and expertise we also said that we know we can also um you know receive knowledge from people of this world not necessarily godly or people or believers but you know we can uh, receive from their experience their skills their expertise but if they tell us to do things that are not in standards with god's word then we you know we know what to do and we what we shouldn't be uh, doing okay the second one is counsel based on look into your books please on god's word yes so counsel based on god's word thank you lucy and then counsel based on the prophetic word okay so god reveals uh, himself uh, through these uh, gives us counsel you know what we need to do in life how we need to go about things situations uh, through these three ways godly counsel through people his word the word of god and through the prophetic word okay but the first one and the last one we always need to test it with god's word okay so even if we receive counsel from godly people we need to go back to god's word and see if it's in line with the truths and the standards of god's word even the prophetic word we need to go back to god's word and we need to test because we need to test and approve every prophetic word that comes just don't receive it and you know think that is you know directly from god and you just jump into it no you wait you pray about it you also test it um, using god's um, word okay so an example given here is first chronicles chapter 17 verses 1 to 5 please look into your um, you know the the your textbook uh, the publication you know here we see that david had a desire to build god's house okay because the ark of the covenant was in the in a tent and david realized that he's living in a in a beautiful lavish palace and um the house uh, um, the ark of god was just in a tent okay so he wanted to build a house for god and so he reveals his plans to whom to whom does he reveal his plan to yeah the prophet nathan so you can look into your books it's all there you can just follow it helps okay and um, what did nathan tell david immediately he says go and do whatever is in your heart for god is with you okay 
So what would David have thought? Okay, here is a prophet. He's telling me, just go and do it. Maybe it's God's will, it's God's plan and God's purpose. Okay, so Nathan is leaving the king's presence and he's walking away. And what happens? God tells him, go and tell King David that it's not you who will build the temple, but your son. Okay, so here we see that, you know, uh, even though prophet, uh, even though Nathan was a prophet, uh, we see that you know he um, he gave a wrong prophecy. He was he just gave it what gave what was in his heart. So, but you know God told him go and tell David that this is not what you should be doing, but what I want your son to be doing. Okay. So every prophetic word also has to be tested. How do we test it? You go back to God's word, you ask God's word to speak to you, and also you pray about it. Okay, so here we see that, you know, we can receive counsel from three different ways that God leads us. He, uh, he gives us counsel through these three different ways. But how can we test counsel? How can we know if this counsel, what this person is saying, or what I'm reading and hearing from God's word or the prophetic word, how do you know that it is really God speaking to you? Sometimes it can be even your mind, your emotions. Okay. So Romans chapter 14, verse 17 says that the kingdom of God is about what? Romans chapter 14, verse 17 says the kingdom of God is about righteousness. Peace and joy. Okay, the kingdom of God is about righteousness, peace, and joy. So, how do you test counsel? You test if the counsel is producing righteousness, if it is, you know, leading you into righteousness, which means is it leading you to do what is right in God's sight? If it is producing peace, it has to produce a lot of peace and it also has to bring joy into your life if there is no righteousness peace and joy that means it's not from the king it's not from god and it is not from his kingdom okay so how do you test counsel whether it's leading you into righteousness peace and joy okay if it is bringing i'm producing peace is bringing joy then it is from god so in this um um, guidepost, the seventh one, you know, we, we learn that we need to receive counsel, okay? Go to somebody who's qualified, who's good to talk to you about your circumstances, about your situation, and uh, who you're able to receive, and who you know can speak into your life, and who can give you an unbiased view. That means will not just tell you anything and everything is okay, you know, agree with you on everything, but, you know, um, They'll give you an unbiased view of the way things are and what you should be doing, you know, uh, and also people who would speak into your lives. So God can use godly counsel. God can use people, godly people. He can use prophetic word. He can use the word of God to guide you into his plans and his purposes. Okay, so there's no harm in going and asking people, but it's important for you to also hear from God and test whether this is bringing about righteousness, peace, and joy. Okay, we'll move on to the next guidepost, the eight one, recognizing times and season. Okay, if we want to discover God's plan and purpose for our lives, it's very important to understand, you know, uh, uh, or or recognize the times and the seasons. Okay, why? Because God works according to a timetable. Right? All of you here in Bible college, you're studying, you have a timetable. All of you online, uh, our e-learning students, you also follow a timetable. I hope what time you get up, what time you have to get to work, you know, all of those things. You have a timetable that you uh, have in your mind that you follow. Okay, So also God has a timetable. God has a time in which he does things. He does not just get up one morning and say, okay, what do I do with Selena's life? Okay, what do I do with this person's life? Or what do I do with, uh, you know, Bangalore City? No, it's everything is uh, pre-planned. It's planned even before the foundations of the world. So God knows beforehand what he is going to 
do. He has a timetable. He works in times and seasons. Okay. Now look, uh, give you an example from God's word in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Can somebody read that please? Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between you, your seed and her seed. She shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Okay. Thank you. So here we see that, you know, God spoke in the Garden of Eden that he would, you know, send the seed of the woman who will destroy the head of the serpent. Who is the seed of the woman here? Who is the seed of the woman who will bruise or crush the head of the serpent? Who is the seed of the woman? Jesus. Okay, Jesus is the seed of the woman. Jesus, thank you, Lucy. Jesus was born of Mary, born of a woman. Okay, and who is going to crush the head of the serpent? Who is the serpent here? Satan. Who is going to crush the head of the serpent? Jesus. Okay, so Jesus, so when Adam and Eve sinned, you know, it was not a surprise for God. He knew what is going to happen, and he also has pre-planned what he is going to do beforehand. He has pre-planned everything. So he knows, you know, in like in 4,000 years what he is going to do. So what happened in the Garden of Eden, God knows in 4,000 years that he is going to send his son and his son is going to die on the cross and when he dies on the cross he's going to disarm crush or destroy the works of the evil one okay so it was going to take how many years four thousand years okay so you can ask the question why did god have to wait for four thousand years to send jesus as the messiah and to crush the head of the serpent or to destroy the work of the serpent look at galatians chapter 4 verse 4. Can somebody read that please? Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. Galatians. But when the fulfillment of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. So what happened in the what time? What does Galatians 4 4 say? In the fullness of time. Fullness of time okay in the fullness of time which means it is a kairos time which means it's a god appointed time the right time when god would send his son so you know meaning that god was waiting for the completion or he was waiting for the fullness of time before he could send forth his son so god does things in appointed times and seasons okay another example we can look at is you know when um remember when god told abraham that your generations or, or your descendants will be as slaves in an unknown country for how many years for 400 years okay and then we see that in the fullness of time god raised up whom to deliver the people of israel from egypt God raised up Moses, okay, to deliver his people out of Egypt. So it took 400 years. Of course, it took 440 years because 40 years, why? Why 40 years extra? Because Moses disobeyed God. He went ahead and killed an Egyptian. So it took 40 more years. It delayed God's timing. But in 400 years, God delivered his people out of Egypt just like he promised um, Abraham okay so why 400 years because it was a fullness of time it was a right time it was a completion of time when God wanted to do it okay look at another and another example we can look at is you know when the people of Israel were very disobedient God said he's going to send them into Babylonian captivity how many years was a Babylonian captivity 70 years okay after 70 years, thank you, Lucy. After 70 years, what happened? After 70 years, what did God do? He raised up a king called Cyrus, who sent the people back to the Israelites back from Babylon or Persia, that time to 
Jerusalem. So God has appointed times and seasons or a, he works according to a timetable or we can say he works according to a, a calendar which he determines, which he's already planned and purpose. In the same way, God has a timetable for your life. God has a timetable for my life. So turn around to your neighbor and say, hey, God has a timetable for your life. Okay, be excited about it. Because, you know, there is a specific structure. There is something specific that God has planned for you. Okay. Uh, look at Psalms chapter 31 verse 15. Can somebody please read that? Psalm 31 verse 15, please. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Who's, uh, where is your time? In God's hands, okay, in the most able, worthy, powerful, omnipotent, omniscient, loving, graceful, merciful, compassionate person's hand, and that is God, okay? So there's nothing to worry because your times, your seasons is in God's hands, okay? So tell your neighbor or tell yourself, my time is in God's hand. Yes. I like what she's doing, putting her hand on her heart and saying, my time is in God's hand, okay? So when you think that nothing is working out in your life, you don't see things, you don't see breakthroughs, just declare this promise and say, "My God, my time is in your hands, okay? Um, so uh, look at what Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 says. Can somebody read that? Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 and 11, please. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Verse 11 as well. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put a eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. Amen. So he says... The writer is saying to everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. So there's a time, a season, a purpose for everything that happens in our lives. Okay. And verse 11 says that he makes all things beautiful in his time. Okay, so God is going to make all things beautiful. He's going to bring everything into perfection. He's going to bring everything into fullness, into maturity uh, in his appointed time. And in his appointed time, he's going to make all things beautiful. Amen? Amen? So God is going to make everything beautiful in the fullness of his time. He's going to make everything perfect in your uh, life. So we need to learn to view life as a series of seasons. Our life is not just one season. From birth to death, there are different seasons in our life. So what do you think are the different seasons in our life? What are the different seasons in your life? Sorry, can you please speak loudly? What are different seasons in your life? Huh? God's timing. Yeah, what are the different seasons in your life? How do you begin your life? As a baby, as a child, okay? Then what do, what do you become? Then you grow up to be a, you go to school, okay? Then you grow up to be a adolescent, um, you know, a teenager, a youth, an adult. You get into marriage, family, uh, then you grow old, okay? So different seasons in life. Okay, seasons when uh, you're studying, seasons when you're a kid, you're a baby, you're depending on others, seasons when you are, um, you know, studying, seasons when you are getting into your career courses, seasons when you are uh, getting into a job, a season of marriage, season of having children, season of having family responsibilities, um, season of growing old. Okay, so different seasons in our life. So we need to learn to view our life as a series of seasons okay and we know that every season has a beginning and an end you're not going to be a child for the rest of your life you're not being a baby crying and you know crawling on your feet you're on your on your knees you know 
uh, you are going to learn to walk, you're going to learn to jump and run and to take on responsibilities and behave like a young person, a woman, a, 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 a responsible adult, okay? So we need to look at life as uh, seasons and every season has a beginning and an end and then a new season begins in our life, okay? Are you understanding me, everyone? Yes? Okay. So what we need to understand is that in every season, God has a purpose. When you are a baby, it doesn't mean that you write your 10th standard exam. That's not God's purpose for your life, okay? When you are in grade 5, it doesn't mean God wants you to get married. When you are in grade 8, it doesn't mean that God wants you to go and get a job. Or you might have a desire in 8th standard, 9th standard, 10th standard to become a doctor. Soon after you finish your 10th standard, you don't wear a white coat and go to a hospital and say, I want to become a doctor, so I'm here to see some patients. What do you do? You have to study 11th and 12th. You have to write your entrance exams for medicine, whether you qualify. You qualify for medicine, engineering, want to be a chef, cook, pilot. You don't say, I want to be a pilot and go and sit in the cockpit and say, I want to fly the pain. Plane. You don't do that, right? You go through the course, you learn, you get your certificate, you pass your exams, and then you have to do the tests, and then you get into a, a job, okay? So every season has a purpose, and you need to understand what is the season of life you are right now in. So as our, um, you know, in-person students, what is the season that you are in, all of you? Come on, don't say, I can't hear you. You be loud and just say, it doesn't matter if it's wrong, it's okay. What is the season of life that you are in now? Learning, yes, you all are students, right? You're learning. Some of our online students are uh, in the, their season of life. Some of you are in motherhood. Some of you are, uh, you know, um, just married. Some of you are going to get married. Some of you are older. You are grandparents. Uh, different seasons of life. So you need to know what season of life you are in right now and understand what you are supposed to do and what you are not supposed to do. So now I, I hope and understand, I hope you understand as in-person students that as students, you know, what is your responsibility? Not just eat and sleep, okay, and just come to class. What is your, what, what are you supposed to do? Study, learn, use all the time and the resources and the opportunities to, you know, to um, be trained for ministry, to receive from God's word, to learn God's word, to read God's word, to just dive into God's word. Okay, because once you get into ministry, you will not have time. Okay, you desire to learn, to read, to know, you won't have the time. So this is a good time for you to learn. So it's not a good time for you to just sit around, chat with your friends, play and uh, eat and sleep. But it's a good time for you to study, read God's word, prepare, go through all the course notes, you know, and be prepared for the next season of life that God is taking you uh, to. Okay, look at First Chronicles, what First Chronicles chapter 12 um, verse 32 says. Can somebody read that? Of the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The, their chiefs were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. The sons of Issachar, what did, what, what did they have? What understanding they had? The understanding of times, that means they knew what is the time and season and they knew what Israel was supposed to do, okay? So, and since they understood the times and seasons, they were able to tell Israel what to do, okay? So, when we understand the times and seasons, you know, it will tell us what we should be doing and what we need, we shouldn't be doing, okay? Everyone's understanding? Yes. Okay. So when you understand the time, the season of your life that you are presently in, you will be able to determine what is the course of action that you have to take. You know, what purpose are you supposed to pursue and what plans you are supposed to carry out. So when you understand the times and seasons, you will know what is the action you need to get into, what your what is the purpose, what you need to pursue, what is the plans that you need to carry 
out. Okay. So now as students, your, your action is to study, to get as much information, knowledge, to train yourself. Okay. What is your purpose? To build yourself up in the word of God, to strengthen and feed your spirit man, to, uh, to build yourself, to flow in the gifts of the spirit, to listen to God, okay? And also to know what is God's calling and ministry so that you get trained in that area. So what is God's plan and what are you supposed to um, carry out, okay? Uh, look at what Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verses 5 and 6 says. Can somebody read that please? He who keeps his command will experience nothing harmful, and a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment, because for every matter there is a time and judgment, though the mystery of man increases greatly. Amen. So it says, who is able to discern both time and judgment? Look at uh, your books. Look at the Bible. What does it say? Who is able to discern times and judgment? The one who is able to keep the commandments. The one who is able to keep the commandments. Thank you, Esther. Who else? A wise man is able to discern the times and, you know, both time and judgment. Anyone here is a wise man and a wise woman? No? Sad. I think I'm a I, I am a wise woman. Why? Why do you think I'm a wise woman? Because I'm a child of God and he gives wisdom to all who ask him. And I've asked God for wisdom and he gives me wisdom and I keep asking him for wisdom in various areas. So you need to believe that you are a wise woman and a wise man. And if you don't are not sure, then you can just quickly say this prayer right now. Say this, God, pour your wisdom into my life. Give me a wise heart to discern times and seasons. We need the wisdom of God. Okay. You, we already spoke about the difference between knowledge and wisdom, right? We need wisdom to know what is right, what is wrong, and to do what God wants us to um, do. Okay. So um, here we see a wise man's heart design, discerns both time and judgment for because for everything there is a time and a season and there is a judgment, uh, which means that for every matter in life, there is a time, there's a right thing to do it. And a wise man or a wise woman is able to understand both the time and the judgment and what to do in the time and the season. Okay. So what do we learn from this? Your goal should be, you know, just tell God, God, what, ask God, God, what season of life I am in. Please give me the wisdom. Okay. Give me a wise heart to discern what season I am in, what time of life I am in, what kind of action I am supposed to take, okay? And if we do this and we live by seasons and are able to understand and discern and take the action and fulfill the plan and purpose, uh, then we are going to step into the next season and we are going to go further and further into God's plan and purpose for our lives, okay? Now, there are several seasons in life Okay, we live by seasons. Uh, there are several examples of seasons that we can talk about. Uh, a few examples are given here. The foundation season. Foundation season or the laying season. Now, when you're building a building, okay, you're going to build a building. Uh, what is the first thing people do? Foundation, right? Now, foundation time is a very beautiful time, right? Yeah? Everybody, foundation time is a very beautiful time. Yes? It's a messy time, right? Because when you're digging the earth, you just bring out mud and mud and mud. And sometimes there's just water and there's mud everywhere. And there's just all you see is a deep pit. There's nothing beautiful. There's nothing glamorous. There's nothing great. You don't see a big building standing there, a beautiful uh, designed building. But you, all what you're seeing is what? mud and mud and mud and a deep pit that is going deeper and deeper and deeper, okay? So it's not a glamorous time. It's a lot of hard work. You just see people digging and digging and digging. Sometimes it's in the sun. You feel bad for them. So the foundation season is a lot of hard work, 
It's not glamorous time. It's not restful time, peaceful time. Everything is not easy. It's not beautiful time. It's a messy time. And it's a lot of hard work. So when you are going to, when you are looking at a building where they're doing a foundation, you don't clap and say, wow, what a beautiful building. Because there is no building there. Okay. It's, it's just a deep pit. Now, if you ha have to build a building as big as, a, you know, this Bible college, how much deeper you need to go. The, the bigger the building, the number of floors, the deeper the foundation. Okay, so why? Because the deeper, the stronger the foundation is going to be for your building. Are you with me, everybody? Yes? Okay. So, you know, um, and during the foundation time, there are certain objectives. People make sure that, you know, a lot of money is spent in foundation because they use a lot of material. Because if the foundation is weak, the whole building can just come crumbling down, can collapse very, very easily. Okay. So also, you know, we go through foundation seasons in our life. And it's not going to be easy. Like, for example, what can be your foundation seasons when you are a student? We are in school, you know, it's all a lot of hard work, study, 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 homework, projects, okay? Then you go into college, it's even more difficult studies, you get into your courses, it's even more. Then you think, oh, when I get to, when, uh, when I get into a job, there will not be any studies, okay? It's going to be easy, but when you get into your job, things are going to be more difficult. Why? Because that is your foundation season you will have a boss who says do this do that you're ready to go home and he says you haven't finished this i want this report and you're like oof you know or you're trying to get together with in, in work along with your colleagues people are difficult you know you have long working hours and and you're thinking hey i didn't you know envision all of these things i didn't think all of this is going to happen i just thought i'm going to get a lot of money when i work and i'm going to enjoy my life going to buy this buy that do this do that go for a vacation go for a holiday but here i can't even go for a vacation my boss is not giving me leave right so we are so frustrated and then what do you do sometimes when you get into this um, foundation season we just want to run away right we think hey i can go and get another job but what happens when you get into another job? It's the same thing there also. The st story repeats itself. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to just, you know, recognize the season that you are in and know that God is preparing you for something greater and bigger. And you need to be patient. You need to endure. You need to persevere. You need to learn things, not complaining and grumbling and murmuring, but you need to learn things. So some of you are disappointed that on Fridays you are having fasting prayer. You've never fasted in your life. You've never fasted in your life. You're hungry. Your stomach is growling. Why do we have to go through all this? Why do I have to get up at five o'clock in the morning? I've never woken up at five o'clock to uh, pray. Or, you know, you're wondering, why should I sit for such long hours of lecture? You know, so all these are training for you, you're in the foundation period, it's training, and all these things are good. It's going to mature, it's going to make you mature, it's going to make you strong. And you know, your how strong is your foundation is how strong you are going to stand and face things in um, life. Okay, so once you are able to go to that foundation season where you are going to do an excellent job you are working hard you are uh, not murmuring complaining grumbling you know you're giving your best three years four years you can become a team leader okay then you move up the ladder you because god is seeing your attitude right god is seeing your attitude remember joseph's life he was a slave and suddenly he becomes a manager okay why because God is not partial with him. Romans chapter 2, 11, uh, verse 11 says that God is not a partial God. But why did God give him, why did God cause of all the slaves for Potiphar to look at Joseph? Because Joseph's attitude was right. He did not say, I'm a rich man's son. I've never taken the broom. I've never swept. I've never done a job. You know, I've never been a slave. I'm not slave material. I'm a rich man's son. I've been treated unfairly. He did not sit down there, grumble, complain, murmur, and cry. But he worked hard, and God saw his attitude. 
So if you want to become a big man, you know, want to become a big pastor, big evangelist, have a big church, you know, it's good. You can dream that. But God is not, God is looking more for your attitude. Okay? He's more interested in your character than what you do. Okay? Because he knows if your character is not good, he cannot keep you in a place where you can flourish and you will become a mess and you will destroy the kingdom's work and destroy so many lives along with you. Okay? So very important for us to um, persevere, endure, understand the times and seasons of the foundations and go through it, the positive attitude, learn, and then move on. Okay? The next one is... Um, Tunnel season, you know, all of you go when you were, uh, when you're children, you go to these tunnels in the toy train and all of us are screaming. Or if you're going in the train where you have to pass through tunnels, you know, tunnels, you know, the path that is made in the, uh, in a, in a rock. Okay. And how is it? It's totally dark. And when, when we go through it, people scream and make weird noises in the train and the children are screaming. But is it going to last forever? No, you, you know that you are going to come out of that tunnel. There is light at the end of the tunnel. So also in true life, sometimes we don't know what God is doing with our lives. Or sometimes you're going through times where there is no breakthroughs or there's no answer for prayer. You're praying. You know, it's a tunnel period. It's a dark season. But what do you do at the time? You hold on in faith because you know the train is not going to stop there. You know that you're going to come out. You have a destination to reach. And then you are going to reach your destination. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. Even if the train stops, you know, you can get down, take your mobile phone, put on the light and walk out of the tunnel okay that is faith that is strength that is endurance that is courage okay so when we go through tunnel seasons of life you need to have the eyes of faith okay and then you can speak to your mountains you can you know get out you can speak to your uh, problems difficulties speak god's promises and you will see god's promises come fulfilled in your life you will see god's promises being an yes and an amen because god is faithful He's a God who never leaves you, never disappoints you. He's always there with you. Amen? Okay? Then another example of seasons is, you know, just enough season versus abundance. Okay? Now, all of you are, when you are young as children, you know, it's an abundant season because you ask your parents for chocolate, they'll buy you. You want um, um, ice cream, they'll get you. Even if your parents don't have money, somehow... They will not get for themselves, but they'll get for you. You want a new shoes, you need, you know, for your birthday, you want a party. They might not have money. They will borrow, they'll do anything. But, you know, they will forego things in their life, but they will give you. So there's a time when you enjoy abundance. But there's a time when you will become, you come to a place of your parents, where you will be your parent yourself or you start earning. Okay, and your parents are not earning, you can't depend on them. That time you're very, very careful with your money, how you spend. You might stay in a small house, you might uh, think twice before you eat something, buy something for yourself, because it's your money, your hard-earned money. You have to take care of your wife, your children come, you know, all the children come, you have to pay your rent, this, that. You have to take care of your parents as well, uh, for some of us. And so it's a time where, you know, you are um, just enough season. Okay, but they're not going to last in that season for too long. There's a time when you are going to move up the ladder, you're going to earn more, you know, a time when you can move into a bigger house, you can buy a two-wheeler, then you have a bigger family, you, you can afford a car. So it's a time of abundance, okay? So also when we start ministry, it's a time where it is... Um, a just enough season. Maybe God gives you a, you think your uh, God's plan for your life is to have a big church, but you start off with only five people. You start off with only 10 people. Like when Pastor Ashi started, I think it was just five or six people uh, who were there, the first church meeting that he had. But now you can see the big church, but it's years, right? So it started off very small, but there is abundance, there is a harvest, okay? Then there is also seasons of grief and sorrow and pain okay so um 
sorry, uh, just before that, you know, I like to say that when we are in the season of just enough and abundance, you know, the key is learning to be faithful, faithful in whatever God has entrusted you to do, manage things, even in the small little things. Like, remember, Pastor Ashi saying that even when it was just 10 people in his church, you know, he would count the offering, the tithe, and still has the account for all of us even today. So started off with the very first day. Okay, how he's how he thought he's going to have a church of 5,000 people, what he's going to do then, he started off even when he just had five or 10 people in the first service. Okay, so we need to be faithful in managing the little that God gives us. Luke chapter 16, verse 10 to 11 says, can somebody read that please? Luke chapter 16, verses 10 to 11. Luke chapter 16, verses 10 to 11. Can somebody he read? He who is faith, faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches. So what is it saying here? Jesus is saying you need to be faithful in the little things. Now what you have is very little less students. But if you're faithful in the little things, God is going to move you to a season where you are going to have abundance, but you need to learn to manage the little things that he's given to you right now. Be good stewards of the time, the talents, the abilities, the opportunities God has given you. And when you, God sees you faithful and trustworthy in the little things, he will move you and he will give you and trust you with the bigger things. Amen? Okay, so we'll go for our break and we'll come back after break. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> 